That's better. Today on JM on Cars, Laurie and I drive 600 miles from coast to coast to coast to pick up this idiot a new car that he's bought off eBay, sight unseen. With entirely his help, 100% his help. Hello everyone, it is about five o'clock, it is a Friday, it is getting dark, it is snowing. I am in the car with Laurie and we are presently at the start of a 300 mile journey from the east of England to basically northwestern Wales to a little place called Anglesey. And the purpose of this trip is to pick up a new car for Laurie. Because a lorry, the man you'll know from such videos as Lorry Drives the Evora and Lorry Picks Up a Fire Engine in the Middle of Nowhere. Lorry has a little 106 which is bequeathed to him by his grandmother when she passed away. It has great sentimental value to him, but as a mechanical device, it is less than perfect. So it's become recently rather expensive for him to run. So we have decided that rather than spending all the money needed to bring it back to life, we would try and find him a replacement. Now, certain car prices have gone silly recently, but in the UK, generally, the used car market is quite vicious, so we decided that we would find something that basically gave him an awful lot of value for money. Now, originally, we were going to give him Callisto, this thing, but uh, I kind of like it too much. I'm not sure I'm going to let him have it. I also made the mistake of suggesting to him a little while ago that you should have a look at Toyota MR2s because the last time I looked you could have a really decent one for less than a grand. So he starts looking at these things, sees the fact they've got pop-up headlights and suddenly he's in love. What have I done, right? He then decides not only does he want one with the pop-up headlights but he wants one which has the T-bar roof as if it wasn't bad enough. Now. I said, okay, 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 maybe we can get you one, maybe we can get you one. Now, we saw one advertised on eBay. There were only four pictures for it, and I'll show you those now. All of them were in pretty low resolution. One was an overall shot of the car. One was a shot of the seats, which looked like a dog has been at them. One was a shot of the hideous wheels that I can only guess are aftermarket, but I don't know MR2s well enough to be sure, but I'm pretty sure that they are. And one was a picture of the big exhaust at the back next to a massive scuff on the back. So, not exactly good. So, it was a T-bar though. And we said, okay, it's apparently drives and runs. Apparently. Let's put a punt on it. Let's just have a crazy bid. And, you know, if we get it, great. If we don't, hey, who cares? Because a lot of these things are going for like 1500 to £2,000. It's a UK car with the T-bar, which is generally commands a little bit more money. So we put a bit of £750 down and we won it for 620 which means Laurie now owns a Toyota MR2 that is in Anglesey and we have to go and get it. So that is what we're doing. The weather is anything but inviting. We have a near 300 mile journey ahead of us and hopefully at the end of it we have Laurie's new car. So hope you enjoy this little adventure of ours. On our trips we go to only the finest, finest eating establishments. No Mackie D's for us. We have come to Burger King. Right, Burger King was closed. It's the first kind of disappointment and probably setting the precedent for this trip. So we are forced to visit the Golden Arches. In actual fact there might be a chopsticks which is Chinese food and difficult to eat while driving. Give it that but we're up for any challenge on these kind of trips. So food. So there's an extra element to this journey which I didn't mention earlier. Tomorrow evening one of the local car groups on Facebook is holding a meeting in a little seaside town called Felixstone. So we decided that that would definitely be the best place to show off Laurie's new purchase. So if this journey goes well and according to plan, we will be showing his car at a little funky car show with not very many people tomorrow. It's not a car show, it's like a meet type thing. 
Unfortunately, it's not going brilliantly so far because we had a lot of traffic on the A14, which is a hideous and horrible road for all those of you that don't know it. It is 10 past seven. I told the people at the hotel we'd be there anywhere between nine and 10. And I fear we are gonna, if we're there before midnight, I'll be very, very happy. So I hope they don't mind waiting up for us. Okay, so we have made it to Wales. It is now about 20 to 10. Still have some way to go. We've done over 200 miles so far. Callisto has not missed a beat. Touch imitation wood. And basically, yeah, we are carrying on. Hopefully not gonna get there too late, but um, fingers crossed we had a little bit of traffic, not too much, but going well so far. So if you haven't watched the Callisto intro video, one of his redeeming features is the fact that it's a V8 with nearly straight through pipes. And this is a tunnel. Back to the journey. Here we go. It's a typically gorgeous and sunny day here in Northern Wales and we've spent the night in the finest accommodation that £38 will buy so if you think the life of every YouTuber is non-stop glamour well um, <laughs> it's not uh, we've been separate beds of course because we're at that stage in our relationship <laughs> and so let's have a quick pre-race interview with our driver for the day Mr. Laurie with the world. Oh wow, well, look at that for effectiveness of the light. Oh, oh I'm blind. <laughs> so, to bring you up to speed, James has spent the entire morning going through his phone, thinking of every single fault that he can find with the MR2. He's checked the MOT history and he's gone through every time it's failed and going, Oh Laurie, I don't know about this. It's just been the perfect way to prep me for this journey. Um, he's also given me lots of Encouraging words of how he's going to help us if it doesn't go well, which again go along the lines of ha 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 vum. So um, I'm going to work a ghoul. So I had a quick look on how to fix problems with the MR2 last night. The first page of results that Google came up with were how to stop the T-bar roof leaking. Wales is not a good place for something with a leaking roof. Yeah, uh, so and also there's a possibility that 
one of the previous owners may have been slightly shady with their MOT, which for those of you viewing from outside the UK, that's the annual vehicle inspection that we have to do. And if you don't have one of those, you can't drive the car. And it does have an MOT certificate, which lasts until August, so a good six months. But mysteriously, the last time it went in for its MOT, it had loads and loads of problems and failed on things. And then two days later, mysteriously, all the problems had vanished. So, yeah, we don't know what the condition of it's really going to be until we see it, which will be in about an hour. This is exactly the kind of thing that he's been doing all morning to me. The man does not know how to give you a boost in the morning. It's just, it's not going to work. This is suspicious and this is bad. Cool. Thanks, James. The only bit of the day that I drive something that works. All good. Oh, the sea! Oh, and there's possibly mining out. Quarry. Quarry. That's the word wanted. Looks quarry. Quarry, maybe. There's an old tower up there, a castle of some sort. Yeah. Copper mine. Oh, of course, it's copper in this area, isn't it? That's stop, 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 stop. K bark, that's it. Is it genuine? Yeah, K bark. I'm pretty sure that's it. We are about, I think, two and a half, three hours later from the previous video, and <clears throat> lorry is plus one MR2. Which was not without its complications. The car is um, not concours winning uh, yet, but it also has a functioning oil light. Uh, we fed it two litres of oil and it went off briefly and then came back on so either the oil light is broken and it was with oil as the seller promised us but obviously when you're buying a used car and the oil light is on you assume the worst so we've either drastically overfilled it if you're currently shouting at the screen saying well check the dipstick then you morons we did but unfortunately someone had cut the end of the dipstick off and not knowing what an MR2 dipstick should like when it's complete we had no idea how much of the dipstick was actually missing obviously that didn't fill us with confidence in the car but given the fact we'd driven 300 miles to go get it paid for the insurance and we knew that it now had at least two and a half liters of oil in it assuming it was bone dry before we decided to take it anyway after negotiating a small discount only one headlight was popping up as well which is also however, a problem however that that's it i'm happy it can Anything else can go wrong with it, but they work. Yeah, so they work now, so that's... Oh, they go down again! So that's good news. So, yeah, the thing has been minced inside. So there's a couple of modifications that we appear to have not known about. Uh, this nasty, nasty, nasty steering wheel, which is basically pretty much just gaffer tape in one point. That is going to have to be replaced. The seats, yeah. Oh, Cobra seats, Cobra seats. I love Cobra seats. They're very good, very high quality. These ones, not a shining example of the breed. They, they are, are not very comfortable. They are manky, 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 manky seats. And also it has these nasty, nasty aftermarket pedals, which must go because they are hideous. Um, most other things appear to work in it. Uh, it has the T-bar roof, which Laurie is so delighted with. But yeah, eventually it's gonna be a good car. So we are now about to drive pretty much literally from coast to coast. In fact, just over there, you can't really see it. That is the sea. That is the sea on the western coast of Wales, and we are about to drive to the eastern coast of Suffolk to Felixstowe via my house to probably tart the car, but I don't think I'm going to dare pressure washing it because I think I'll wash half of it away. Well, um, there is that, that rear, have you seen coming? Yeah, this is pretty bad. There's a tiny bit of, uh, that. of, of, of rust um, occasionally. So, yeah, but uh, Laurie's happy, so we're now going to hit in the happy, cars. Happy is a uh, when I'm in it and it's working, I'm happy. When I'm standing looking at it like moments like this, I'm going, 
is going to be a really long way home. That seat is about as uncomfortable as it looks, possibly more so. And it's got a silly harness on it, which um, when we just we stopped to put some fuel in it because it was completely empty. We think it's about a 50 litre tank and putting about 49 and a half litres worth of petrol into it. Put the key down, got into it, did the harness up and then realised I couldn't actually reach the key from where I'd put it. So uh, we're learning, learning about harnesses. My car smells funky. That's fallen apart. I don't know what that is. That's suspect. Yeah. Chuck them and I'll show you. Article two is a bottle of reasonably nice Hugo Boss aftershave with something sort of crusted oh. on it. Can I blend these gloves? Right, I've donned the fetching head cam for this, so let's see if we can get out of Anglesey at least without too much drama. <laughs> we got walkie talkies to help us. filming it though, I mean so people can see what it looks like, but it's got Pump Britannia, but I don't think this is actually the border, is it? The border's obviously miles away. Maybe this is the bridge under Anglesey. Is it designed by Robert Stevenson? Is that the Robert Stevenson? Yes, yes. So there's been an accident here. Not quite what's going on, but it's the road we need. three of them were on Honda Cubs. We're crunching miles, if not time, so we're having a quick break, then we're going to carry on hopefully get to this car meet in shiny happy Felixstowe. Basically speaking, the seat is more uncomfortable than it looks. My leg is gun numb, thus we needed to stop. You have been in it for 200 odd miles though. Yeah, but I can be in, we were in this for 300 miles straight and we were fine. Mm, I'm not swapping. <laughs> There's no way you're not driving that into Felix though. There's no way I'd in hell, to, I'd no to way in hell that you're driving it. Yeah, I know. So, yeah, it's yours. You no, deal with oh it. God. No, it's lovely, apart from the seat. <laughs> it's because, because the seat's gone and there's no uh, fabric holding the foam in place, it all kind of shifts as you're driving. You kind of realise that you're then kind of sitting at an angle with one arse cheek kind of on bare metal. <laughs> you can pad it out with some Jaffa cakes. We've got lo Laurie brought so many supplies. Have you got a pillow with your sleeping bag? No. Right. I've, got, I've got a jacket. Go and do your stuff and then we've got to, we've got to be in Felix Day, mate. We eventually made it to Felix Day, only about half an hour behind schedule. There we met three other MR2 owners and were able to borrow a dipstick from one of them. That let us know that the car was sitting just below the minimum mark, oil-wise, so there had been almost no oil in the car at the start of the day. Where it had gone before we got there, we do not know. Fortunately, one of the guys also had some spare oil in his car that he let us use to top up ours to the correct level. Nevertheless, the oil light still stayed on, so we suspect we probably have a faulty oil level sensor too. Next week, the car is going to be inspected by our local mechanic to see whether the car is solid underneath. If it is, we have many plans for the car already and hope to turn it into a great little car for Laurie. He certainly loves it. 
Right, so if you've made it to this stage of the video, thank you very much for persevering. We thought that as a few days have passed since we got the little thing home, we should update you with what's happened because our first order of business was to get it to our local trusted mechanic so he could put it on his ramp and find out whether Laurie actually had a viable car or a rust bucket. Well, it's good news. The words used by our mechanic are, it is solid. Solid is good. Solid is good. So, solid was used to James. To me, he got, there is nothing that you need to worry about at the moment. Which is still good, but not quite as good as solid. Yeah. So, the main thing is that the car is being kept. It is not as bad as we had feared. Pretty much the rust on it is the rust that you saw in the video. So, we've already <laughs> bought quite a few things because there are a lot of things that do need doing with it. Turns out that one of the tires was very, very knackered on the inner edge, which you basically just couldn't see. So, Laurie had a tiny mishap uh, in the snow with it. Fortunately, we basically written off those wheels anyway because we suspected that the tires would be cheap and knackered and we knew that the wheels were probably the wrong ones for this car. So we've already bought... Well, we've bought yeah, four new tyres, a nice new set of the original wheels for it, because we're going back to how it was rather than... They're not actually... They're not as bad as we thought they were. In the photos, we thought the wheels looked absolutely dire. Yeah. In person, they're all, they're all right. right. But uh, we're quite happy to go back. And in my defence in the snow, firstly, mid-engine rear-wheel drive car in the snow. That is bad. Secondly... His face. Secondly, these are excuses. These are excuses, but they're good excuses, and I've got plenty of them. The guy did say there is subtle direct grip left on that front tyre, and that is my main saving grace: subtle grip. That's his excuse. Anyway, so we've also bought a complete set of discs and pads all round for the car. We've got some new calipers as well because those are sticking, and oh. we're basically going to get some new seats in there as well to replace the nasty dog-eating Cobra ones, which. Well, good seats once, but I think it's just going to be easier. The harness is a bit of a pain in the that, backside. With looking at how the harness has been put into it, we don't know the the roof sections for the T-bar are meant to slide in behind where the, the seats are, into that section there. The harness restraints go through the centre of the seat to the back of the car and look like they'll be right in the way of where you want to put the roof panels. As it is, we haven't really had the weather or the car working to test out this theory, but... Uh, they look though that they'll be right in the way. Yeah. So we've got a couple of other things coming for it too. So there will be another video keeping you up to date with that. But the good news is that the trip wasn't a total waste. No, it's great fun. So if you want to see more MR2 nonsense along with loads of other Lotus stuff and all this that, and the other, like, comment, tell us what you think Laurie should do with the car, and subscribe to see more of this very soon. That's preferably not scrap the bloody thing, but. Are we waving? Yes. Bye. Tubby bye bye. <laughs>